Inside QVC presents Feeling Good Together, a podcast mini series focusing on mental health and well being discussions. Will Gowing here, and it's fair to say that 2020 didn't turn out as expected for most people. Now more than ever, it's so important to talk about how we can look after our own mental health. In this series, I spoke with four incredible women from our QVC family, all of whom have overcome seriously challenging events in their lives that have shaped who they are and what they've gone on to achieve. You know, I think one thing that we've managed to glean from lockdown, which obviously has been challenging for so many people in so many different ways and totally not taking away from that, but um, is... I suppose the fact that this hamster wheel of life, that way of shoving so much stuff into our everyday existence, home and work, um, it had to stop. When I first started my treatment, that they said to me, I had basically a 5% chance of complete recovery. And at that point, Somehow, I thought, okay, 5%, well, that's just a statistic. That's what they're telling me. But what I heard was complete recovery. I didn't hear 5%. I focused on the two words, complete recovery. And I just said, that's that's going to be me. Well, I've always been a great believer in the body being a wellness machine. You know, everything it does is to try to make itself better. So I trusted that with the right mind, body, spirit activities and attitudes that I would heal. The reason why it is so important is it's vital for you to know that you're not alone. I think it's also really important that, you know, whatever your worries are, however small you might consider them to be, if they worry you, then they matter. They are important, they really, really are. In this episode of our Feeling Good Together series, I spoke with wellbeing and Pilates expert, Marjolaine Brugman, all about how a serious accident changed the course of her life forever. We also discussed what Pilates gives her and her clients, and of course, the importance of good mental health and wellbeing. This episode for me is a masterclass on all things well-being. Marjolaine has been sharing her knowledge for many years. I find her truly inspiring and really think there is something in this episode for everyone. So this is Marjolaine Brugman on Inside QVC. So Marjolaine, a very warm welcome to the Inside QVC podcast. It's so lovely to speak with you today. Where are you right now? I'm actually in Todos Santos, which is about 70 miles north of Cabo San Lucas on the Baja uh, in Mexico. And that sounds incredible. I'm sure the weather is a lot better where you are than it is here in Britain right now, but you're gonna bring us plenty of sunshine on this podcast. And I, I think enlightenment as well. This is a special series of health and well-being that we're focusing on at QVC. We're encouraging all of our lovely listeners to join us with a virtual cup of tea, essentially. Are you drinking anything right now? Yes, of course. I'm a, a an avid tea drinker and I buy all my tea in England because because there's no decent tea in America. Uh, And I make it the very English way, um, you know, sort of boil the water and make sure the milk goes in the cup first so you're stirring as you pour. I love my tea. I probably have too many cups a day, but I do enjoy it. Oh, I tell you what, listeners up and down the UK right now are going to be so happy to hear that you put your milk in first. I know. Isn't that funny? I mean, I think growing up in Australia, where tea was obviously a thing that you... You drink every afternoon, you know, it's a gathering, people come together. Uh, I I learned to make a pot of tea with loose tea and, and to really share that with friends and family. And I've always continued to do that. I have very many teapots too, because I, I just love the whole ritual of tea. That's fantastic to hear. And I think actually, we won't sort of labour the tea thing, but there is a ritual to it, isn't it? And I think well-being, being sort of mindful, taking time for things. Actually, the ritual of making tea really falls into that. It really does. And I think it also speaks to the last year um, of connection. You know, you, we haven't really been allowed to share with friends. And so I think when you have those little rituals for yourself, it connects you somehow to something bigger than just you. 
Uh, and I, over the summer, I discovered matcha, which I had never had before, which is a very intense Japanese green tea that is really high in antioxidants. And it, it has even more of a ritual because you, you actually um, stir the tea with the water with a little bamboo whisk. And it's very beautiful. It turns out sort of lime green and then um, milk in it makes it just this gorgeous colour. And it tastes really delicious. You no doubt are going to share so many incredible tips with us. I'm, I'm so ready, willing to learn from you right now. What does, just to start the conversation, what does health and well-being mean to you? That's a great question, because as we talk about Aeropilates online, I'm always saying it's not just about one thing. You know, I think it's mind, body and spirit will. It's being positive, you know, making sure that you're vigilant around your mental attitude. You have to you have to be positive. And I think the more positive you can be, the more the outcome of your day becomes beneficial and fun and, and you know, builds happiness. So definitely positive mental attitude. Then of course your body, I think you have to move and moving gently, moving intuitively, doing something that you enjoy doing when you move is very important. And then of course there's the spiritual component and for everybody that's very subjective. However, I think to know that you're not alone, that there's something bigger than you that you are protected and taken care of and that everything's meant to be. I think that those three things come together. And when they're in balance, I think your life is just full and rich and hopefully um, calm and full of joy. Now, just to speak a little bit wider to your background for those who maybe haven't come across you on QVC before, back in the mid-90s, something happened that very much changed your life. Can you take us on a bit of a journey through this time? Yes, and one one might think, gosh, you know, that was a hideous thing to happen. But so many amazing things have come out of it. And I think that's another really good lesson to know that when adversity hits you, there's always a silver lining. So I was um, a young mum working really, really hard to support my five-year-old and um, always entrepreneuring, you know, doing businesses. And went out running one morning very early. I was living in Santa Fe, New Mexico, and I bent down to tie my shoe on this dirt road and facing away from the road. And a car came around the corner and this poor woman had some children in the back of her car and they were screaming and she turned around to look at them and she hit me. And it, it threw my body up into the air. I landed in the middle of the road and obviously was really seriously damaged. So in the hospital, it was a few months later, um, through the healing process, my orthopedic surgeon recommended rehabilitation. But in Santa Fe, there was an amazing Pilates studio, which I had never heard of. But he suggested, since I was pretty athletic and fairly fit, you know, he said, I think Pilates might be a really nice way to rehab. So I ended up at the studio with um, some incredible rehab Pilates trainers and discovered the reformer for the first time. And it was about three months of three times a week that I fell in love with what it did for my mind, my body and my spirit. Uh, definitely helped to heal my injury. But, you know, over that time, I could see that it was it was so much more than just a healing mechanism. It really it calmed me down. It brought uh, balance to my body and my life. And I thought, wow, you know, this is something that everyone should have access to. And, and at the time, it was very expensive. And my insurance was paying for it to begin with. When they stopped, I couldn't keep going three times a week. I couldn't afford it. So I thought, wow, you know, there's a way to make this available for home use. And then, and thus the journey began. It took a couple of years to really get it off the ground, but we developed a small home machine, um, patented it, and ended up on QVC. And, you know, here we are all these years later with over a million machines all over the world and so many people that have been healed in so many different ways. Let me just ask you, following your accident, I read that you 
you were in that sort of mental space where you didn't know what the future was going to be. You didn't know what your recovery was going to be. How did you sort of channel your mind into a positive, positive set going forward? Well, I've always been a great believer in the body being a wellness machine. You know, everything it does is to try to make itself better. So I trusted that with the right mind, body, spirit activities and attitudes that I would heal. And, you know, the shattered femur obviously healed over time. My posture was a mess because my whole pelvis had been completely rotated. So I wasn't, you know, took time to uh, restore the muscles that have been damaged and the ligaments that have been torn. But, you know, you just, um, I don't know, I learned so much, Will, about patience, about movement that is gentle on your body and not so harsh. You know, I used to be a runner and running every day made me feel great, but it does a lot of damage. So discovering the reformer changed my life in, in every possible way. Uh, it also really helped me to de-stress, which in all of our latest studies, we've, we've, um, we've actually proven that you can reduce your stress over 50%. So that's sort of massive, you know, especially as a single mom and, um, you know, someone that was working so hard all the time, you know, you're burning the candle at both ends when you're a single mother. And I think a working single mother, so it was um, it was very healing in, in many, many ways. As you said earlier, it, the whole story of Aero Pilates and, and what that brings into somebody's life has touched so many people around the world. Can you give us some examples of, because I'm sure they've, they've been in touch with you and told you and enthused how much it's improved their quality of life. Can you give us some examples of that? Gosh, thousands of examples. Every day I hear a new one. It's always so heartwarming. So some of the early ones were really interesting. Um, the MS patients or people that had serious arthritis or, you know, those sort of chronic conditions where movement is suggested and recommended, but it's hard to find something gentle enough to help you heal and get blood flowing and get muscles stronger. Those people were really grateful to find the reformer uh, because they started to see improvement in their day-to-day -day levels of, of wellness. Um, and then, of course, there were there are many examples of people that write things like, oh, you know, I've had numbness in the bottom of my feet for 10 years and finally I can feel my feet again. Like you get things like that and you think, wow. And then weight loss was a really big thing. When, when I developed the rebounder, I did it because I was a runner, as you know. So I, I believe in cardio, but I knew it was high impact. So when we explored the idea of a little trampoline at the end of the reformer, we were all a little, you know, uncertain as to what it would do. Um, once we started doing the studies, and one of the studies we did was with pre-diabetic patients, so many of them were very overweight, and they all had you know, pre-diabetes markers that were pretty indicative of eventual diabetic conditions. So when we worked with them and we saw people that maybe had dodgy knees and couldn't lose weight, and we got them on our five-chord reformer and they started to lose weight, you know, and all of a sudden their markers start to change, you know, their hip waist ratios change, their blood pressure, be because exercise is just shown to be good for all of those things. Um, I was just blown away that we could find something, especially for weight loss, that most people with uh, inability to perhaps run or do other cardio can now actually lose weight in a very safe and gentle way. Aero Pilates is very unique because people around the world, you can be a complete novice, can't you? You don't have to have any sort of existing experience of Pilates to actually get involved. No, I love, I love that you say that, and that's absolutely true. The reformer was developed by Joe Pilates as a way of supporting the body in the supine position. And the reason he did that was that when you're lying down, whatever you're lying on completely supports your body. 
So you don't have to do anything. Your stabilizing muscles don't have to engage. Your mobilizing muscles don't need to do anything. And so in that position, you're extremely safe and supported. And then you add resistance and start to make some movements that force your body to move through space, which is unlike being stationary. So now that you're moving through space, all of a sudden your brain registers that and those stabilizing muscles that are still being supported by the reformer begin to engage. So now you can make corrections in them because they're not doing the work to stabilize you. They're just moving. Uh, and then you add resistance and now you're moving your mobilizing muscles and strengthening those but you can customize it depending on how strong you are, how old you are, how you feel that day. The movements you make on it are very intuitive, so it's a, a very short learning curve. You know, you just do it a few times and you get it. Your body picks it up and it absorbs it. And very quickly you begin to see incredible changes in the balance of your posture. You know, things that were tight get looser and longer, things that are weak get stronger, and you really begin to see those changes quickly. Were there any challenges when you first brought the Aero Pilates story to, to the world? Because you're so experienced and very adept at presenting live on air, again, around the world. But were there any initial challenges? Yes. The biggest challenge was there were about 450 Pilates studios in existence around the world at the time that I became trained. And of course, every one of them felt that you couldn't do Pilates at home. It was specifically required that you had a trainer and that they had to watch over you and that you wouldn't get the benefit if you didn't have that. And I completely disagreed with that because the reformer actually protects you, supports you, challenges you. It does all the things that a trainer does. So there was a lot of controversial conversation around you can't do Pilates at home and you need these really big $4,000 machines in order to do it properly. And, and that just wasn't true. I think that we've proven that now, that um, the right instruction with the right type of safe machine um, can encourage anybody, whether you're a novice or not, to to start to get tremendous benefit out of a daily practice. Something that I've absolutely loved when I was preparing to, to chat with you today, I had a really good look around your website, lighterliving.com, which I, there's so much great content on there. I would urge any of our listeners right now to check it out, lighterliving.com. You seem to have created, in my mind, just a wonderful home for all things well-being. It's not just Pilates. There's so much more there, isn't there? Yes. Yeah, so let me tell you how that came about. Um, once I started selling on QVC, there was a moment of time around the year 2000 when I became pregnant at 47. So I was a much older new mother and people became extremely um, curious around how does she do that? You know, how did she become pregnant at that age? How does she stay so fit? How, what does she eat? Uh, what does she do outside of Pilates that makes her seem to be perhaps healthier than other people of her age? And Instead of just answering those individual emails that I would get hundreds of every day, I decided, well, maybe it's time to do a website that can incorporate what I believe are the three main things in your day that keep you healthy. It's really what you eat, it's how you move, and what you do to feel good. So the website is divided into eat, move, feel, and it became a nice venue for people to participate in, you know, in learning about what I do to stay well. And of course, I'm 66 now. So it's all those years later, and I still feel amazing. Uh, and I think it's just because I incorporate very simple lifestyle choices that are reflected in the website. Now, something that we're focusing on for the month of January at QVC is mental health. I think it's something that, you know, really has become much, much more prominent. People have become much more aware of it, probably more accurately, throughout 2020. So can you share any tips with us? 
Uh, yes, and I and I do want to want to make a little call out to the amazing people, and particularly uh, Prince Harry, his wife, who have really changed the way in which people can talk about mental health instead of being embarrassed to admit that perhaps they're anxious or they have depression. You know, there's a nice conversation to be had around it now where it's accepted and and we're all becoming way more aware of it. And I think that's really important. So um, I, wanted, I want to say a little bit about stress because as I've aged, I've learned more and more about stress, which affects your mental health. And people are not really aware that they're they're living stressful lives. And of course, this pandemic this last year has really exacerbated that. The lack of ability to communicate with people and connect with family and friends, I think has probably really increased the levels of anxiety and depression out there. So what I believe is that um, certainly for me, it's having a spiritual practice that helps me remember that I'm not alone, You know that there is something bigger than me out there guiding me to make proper choices and um, and live life fully but sensibly. So, and again, I mentioned earlier in our Aero Pilates studies we've done, we looked at the levels of stress in, in our subjects before, during, and after their eight-week programs. And to be able to see that the things that contribute to stress in the body like adrenaline and cortisol and those hormones that flow that really age us and keep weight on our body and make us feel depressed and sad and lonely, that if you can reverse that and, and add some nice happy endorphins into the bloodstream, it really makes a difference. So I suggest that a daily practice of movement of some sort that gives you joy, getting outside into nature is really important looking out into the world, you know, be it beyond the brick wall outside your door, but being able to perhaps see the horizon occasionally, enjoying the stars and the moon and the things that are so amazing every single day that are around us that we tend to take for granted. I think these are all really important um, components to having a healthy mental attitude. And also something else that I noticed on your website, um, meditation, mindfulness, it plays a, a role in your life? It definitely does. Uh, however, you know, some people find it really hard to do that. So I think that if you can take some time for yourself to just sit and be quiet, that's really important because we're getting so much stimulus from everything all the time, the computer, the radio, the phone, um, the noise in the street. There's, and there's so much bad information out there that can really increase stress and anxiety. So just a moment of time to sit quietly. Don't do anything. Don't talk to anyone. Just be. Be present with yourself. That's about as mindful as I think um, you can get, and everybody should try to do that. Even five minutes a day it will make a huge difference. And at this time of year, I think a lot of us look to the year ahead and we try and make big changes, whether it be to do with diet, whether it be to do with exercise or spirituality. How can we begin to make long lasting positive changes? Because that's the key, isn't it? Things that you're going to sustain. Yes. Well, first of all, I think we should all get rid of all guilt. You know, um, you go into the holidays and you vow and declare you're not going to overeat or do all the bad things that you're tempted to do. And then when you do them, it's almost like you take 10 steps backwards because you feel so guilty. I think we should just abandon the idea that there's anything wrong and take every day one step at a time. And if you can just make one small change in either how you eat, how you move, and how you feel, one small change a day, it takes 30 to 60 days to, to make a habit, you know, to change a habit from bad to good. So you change one bad habit a day and stick with it for 60 days, it's gone. It, you, you know, you don't go back to it. So I think it all always begins with how you get up in the morning. You know, what's the first thought that you have? Is it a negative thought or a positive thought? Become aware of that. If it's negative, then turn it around immediately. 
you know, get up and do something good for yourself. I always start the day with hot lemon water. I think it's a nice way to flush the system and wake up everything. It feels really good. It alkalinizes the blood. It seems to be uh, a universal great thing to start the day with. And then add maybe a little bit of movement. You know, take a little walk. Um, next day, a slightly brisker walk. Um, maybe make that walk a mindfulness walk, paying attention to what you hear and see and feel and taste. Those little tiny things. I don't, I don't believe in massive changes all at once. I think you just try and do one little thing a day. And if you need motivation, find where you, where you can get that from. And if you need support, then get a buddy, you know, get a buddy on Zoom to help you to stay on track. Before you know it, Will, you're living a whole other life because it's not hard. You know, there's simple things that you can do that will make you feel, look and be better. Can I ask a bit more of a personal question? What, what have you learned over the last year that has been very different for everybody? Have you made any sort of different changes to your life? Yes, I, I've learned a lot of things. Um, first of all, I was very, very grateful to see how the planet changed. You know, when cars were taken off the road and there was not as much travel and less pollution and all of those things made such a difference across the globe. Who would have thought that one small virus could change the entire world so dramatically? So that, I think, is really important and we should not forget that we need to pay attention to the planet, number one. So recycle more, compost, you know, do the things that you can do even in the city, you could get a bokashi bin and start to compost your food scraps um, and feed your plants with the juice. Uh, I think that's number one. Number two, I had a lot of time on my hands to think about supporting my Aero Pilates customers, and I realized that we needed to do an app. So I took a lot of time to build that. I think the other thing was finding new ways to find connection. You know, who knew that you could Zoom and have cocktails with someone? That was really fun for me. And so many of my friends did virtual parties. And, and I thought, wow, you know, you don't have to become depressed and lonely. You can actually still reach out. So going forward, I think we all realize how important connection is. And, um, but there's many ways to do that. Write a letter. You know, you don't have to necessarily get on a plane and go see somebody. You can communicate with them other ways. And also with QVC, you know, talking about communication and connection, you've been with QVC for many years now. Do you remember your very first time on air at QVC? The very first airing was with Julia Roberts. She was my very first host and um, she was very sceptical of, you know, this big machine and what was it going to do? And she has an imbalance in her body from childhood, so I think she was nervous, but she was so lovely. And, I mean, I, I love the British people. You know, they're, they're, you know, I get to go to all these gorgeous countries and I meet all these amazing people, but it was fun to be on the air with her and discover Aero Pilates together and share it. They were the days when people could call in, so we got a lot of calls and and it was successful. And that's always so wonderful because every time a Pilates machine goes into a person's home, I know that their whole life is going to change. Just finally, what, what do you love about sharing your knowledge on QVC? And I'm asking that question because you share the story of Aero Pilates in lots of different ways and now even more ways because we've got social media, we've got websites, you're about to have an exciting new app as well. But what's the unique process of telling the story on shopping television? So when I had my accident, there had been three major careers that I had embarked on. Um, I was a teacher first, a high school teacher, and then I became a television producer. And I also had been involved for a bunch of years in the art world, um, managing a folk art gallery in New York City. So when I had that accident and the 
marketing program developed and it became obvious that I was going to have to be the spokesperson for this product. I had all that experience, you know, from being a TV producer, from being a teacher, from all of that to bring to the table, even though I'd never done it before. And and in that process, I realized that what's important to me is to educate. It's not about selling. It's about sharing because everybody has a different reason for why they need an aeropilates machine. Some people want to lose weight. Some people need better posture. Some people are recovering from an injury. Some people just need a gentle, safe way to move. The, you know, there's a different objective. And of course, you get many, many benefits in all of those arenas when you start to do it. So it's the education that I love, the ability to have an hour to talk about what what's what you can expect and about what the human body really needs is really fun for me. I'm fascinated by science and medicine and anatomy and physiology. I love all that. And, and I think that Aeropilates is just one beautiful way where you don't have to know anything about any of those things and you're going to see the benefits. And just listening there to your career history, that's extraordinary, isn't it? Because it strikes me that I don't know if you're a believer in fate or, or whatever the, the definition of fate may be, but it seems that all of those things have come together to put you in a position that has really connected you to people around the world. You're so right, Will. I think about it all the time. You know, I think there's, you have a calling in life. If you're positive and opportunistic and open-minded, those things become obvious, the next steps you need to take. I had that accident. I was, it's almost like Joe Pilates called me from the heavens and he, he said, hit that girl with a car and teach her this and have her explain it to the world. And my teaching background really helped me be able to explain it because I don't think anybody had really been able to explain what Pilates was until that time. I feel very honored and very blessed. And uh, I've, you know, I've lived an amazing life. And I think I feel so lucky every day. Gratitude is one of the things that I feel every morning when I wake up. I'm so grateful, so grateful. You know, the sun wakes me up as it comes over the mountain. It's the palm trees rustle. It's so beautiful. And I'm very lucky. I think so many people listening right now are going to be inspired by everything that you've said. And some of them may not have even caught you on QVC as yet. So definitely keep an eye out for those shows, everyone. But how can people follow your story right now, you know, on social media, the website, the app? Can you just give us a full rundown of all the details? Where can we go? Yes, thank you. So obviously, lighterliving.com is number one. That's the first website. Um, stop and then lighter living on Instagram and Facebook uh, you can always find Marjolaine Brugman on both Instagram and Facebook as well and don't forget if you are an Aero Pilates aficionado there our Facebook page is phenomenal there's a lot of great groups out there that I kind of dabble in and out of um, Aero Pilates addicts Aero Pilates QVC there's some nice groups and they all motivate each other of course, everybody knows they can email me, Will. I'm one of the very few people that actually really means this. Um, Marjolaine at lighterliving.com, you can email me. I tend to answer. I mean, I try to answer every single email and request. If it slips through the cracks, forgive me. I don't mean it to. Uh, a lot of those students will do a customized workout with me. You know, I can I can teach on Zoom for an hour and and completely customize a workout depending on what someone needs. So I'm very available and, and it's the best part of my day is when people communicate that way with me. So I look forward to it. Marjolaine, it's been an absolute joy. Thank you so much for being on Inside QVC. Thank you, Will. It was really fun. Thank you for thinking of me. Well, thank you very much indeed to Marjolaine for giving us so many great tips on this episode. And you can discover much more about Aero Pilates on our website, where you can also take a look at our Feeling Good Together feature. It's a brilliant destination with tips on supporting your everyday well-being, maintaining optimum performance, and also staying fit. Visit qvcuk.com to find out more. Next week, I'm talking to QVC presenter, Alison Keenan.
Well-being generally and certainly looking after mental health, it means a great deal to me. Um, in fact, I was listening to a program just the other day on television and they were saying that they think that up to 10 million of us will need help with mental well-being when the world becomes um, a saner place because it's affected everybody so deeply. And I think, well, certainly in the past, I might well have avoided um, facing issues for any number of different reasons. And, and I think a lot of us are like that, really. I don't know about you, but I, I find being honest with myself quite difficult sometimes. You know, you, you think about things, would others see that as being a kind of a weakness? In the past, what I've tended to do is to put a lid on the box and sort of shut it away until I was ready to think about it and maybe told fibs to people about how I was actually feeling. And also, I, I think sometimes, and even now, when I love to think that we are all far more open-minded about things, mental health is still something of a taboo, don't you think? If you enjoyed this episode of our Feeling Good Together series, please rate, review and subscribe. I'll see you soon.